I know this is a very late response since your video was on very early November, and this is late into November. This is at least two weeks ahead of the video you made where you play Minecraft part. The second episode of your Minecraft thing where you give this methodology to your sports betting and gambling. You get into big sports terminology like upsets and other stuff that I have to take into account. I mean, I know these general sports terms, seeing as I am into certain sports, just not the standard ones like football. But generally, this is what your video focuses on saying. When someone's ideology in this contemporary world that we live in doesn't really go in par with reality, they like to say that they like to change and distort what they wanted to say. You get into examples with nutrition. A lot of people say, oh, well, saturated fats back in the early 90s where we were born in, saturated fats kills. It's dangerous to have saturated fats. And now that this isn't something that's empirical anymore, ever since the Atkins diet, which died mid-2005 or something, said, oh, it's not saturated, that fat saturated fats are bad for you, it's just that it's not a diet that you can live on. And that's something you've mentioned. Also, you have this race and IQ thing, we have the whole communism ordeal. And in general, it's just bullshit. Okay, hold on. Yikes, my under eye circles. Now, they're really bad. <clears throat> now here's the part that we have to like add in more detail. Since this all goes to the thing you say in all your one hour videos where you bring up that audio clip where that guy says that scientists are advocates and they don't really do anything involving judging information or judging whether something or is true or not. So they don't really evaluate and scrutinize. That's more of a market decision, not a scientific decision. Which is just simple economics. Any innovation or new concept or discovery that's market-wise involves in some degree of evaluation and scrutinizing, whereas science is just a bunch of advocates. Again, it's not be me being a free market fundamentalist, it's just something that I notice. Here's the thing, though. You can add the... I can only add some more instances where this sort of thing happens. For example, in Earth Science, which is something I've been indoctrinated in high school to study. I've been chosen to study Earth Science. <laughs> the thing is, in Earth Science, They've given a lot of misinformation when it comes to the Coriolis effect. They say that when you flush a toilet and the direction of the toilet flushing changes, whether from the northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere, that that's all related to the Coriolis effect. That's why the change in direction is present. That's not the case. It's not because of the Coriolis effect. In other situations where they put illustrations of polar bears and penguins in the same environment when they live in opposite sides of the Arctic world. So it's a little ridiculous. Moreover, in biology, this is something we can both agree on. 
they like to say how when it comes to environment and ecology that the solution to all environmental issues and destructions is to like ration out these resources tighter. They like to say get a hybrid. Stop using fossil fuels. Maybe use diesel. Which we all know diesel fueling is dangerous. It's toxic and the lead from the hybrid battery cars is worse for the environment than stupid fossil fuelings. Because lead, we already got rid of that shit for our pencils, now we use graphite. Because we've noticed that that's actually caused a lot of brain damage back in the days. Why are we going to put this in cars? Things that we sit through for hours upon hours, especially for taxi drivers. You don't want taxi drivers to have brain damage, especially when they're a lot more liable for accidents than normal people who just drive from work to home every day. So why would you put that there? And of course, I checked in your favorites and I actually did see a good alternative and it's liquid fluoride thorium fueling which would be a lot better in terms of dealing with the energy we use in our day-to-day -day operations because it's so energy dense and common that we it's simply too common for us to burn through it's too dense and energy efficient for us to burn through at least now that'd be better than rationing out all these fuels and lowering the standard of our living which happens to be horrifying and what about what about chemistry I mean I deal with chemistry right now what do they say with chemistry well they like to say that when there's a slow decomposure or decay of atoms that it's dangerous and when there's a fix a quick uh, decay of atoms and radioactive isotopes that it's safe when it's actually opposite when these radioactive isotopes and atoms decay at a quicker rate it's actually dangerous and when you do it in a slower rate it's actually safe and of course when you look at this, you can tell that since this is a very fundamental belief to a certain degree of atoms, they can fuck up with other information. For example, the Big Bang. What could they assume if they believe that it's these quick explosions that make things more stable well they can assume that there's these slow decomposures that make things highly unstable and highly dangerous so for all we know this universe could be expanding at a slower rate or it's going to expand in a very shorter period than we expect it's not going to be as long lived as we think in terms of expansion but even that in itself could be bullshitting, and I could be wrong on that. But that's one of the things that you should take into account. It's all these general concepts that lead us to have very bullshit scientific ideologies. Not just scientific ideologies, but general ideologies that you can infer from all this. So what about phonics? I study so many classes that would be much easier if we could look at the phonetic pattern of words. A year ago, they were advertising this shit on TV. There's this little audio book where they could actually teach you how to read at a faster rate. And of course, they over dramatized it. So my mom was like, Oh, this isn't good. It's turning people into geniuses. People turn into geniuses, their minds will be fucked up. When in actuality, they're just teaching us what we've used for hundreds of years until now. 
And so now, in high school English, we're studying a lot of stupid stuff, like reading terminology or literary terminology. Just these little things like thesis statements or themes or foreshadowment or all these dumb terms, soliloquize, monologues, to, in, in order to understand and comprehend literature. Focus on the imagery. The imagery is very important. No, no. If I can't comprehend the vocabulary without having to switch back and forth across the dictionaries, you guys did something wrong for us in a long period of time. Because it's one thing if it's just us being innately unintelligent. Then you would see this weird... Then it would just be this thing where there would be a couple of kids who are performing worse and a couple of kids are performing better. You can empirically see who does it and who doesn't. Which is what happens, but the thing is, it's also the fact that even the kids who do innately better are still doing a mediocre job. So there's something wrong with how we're learning the literature. Or what about mathematics? Why are we learning this complex algebra, geometry, and trigonometry? I mean, none of us want to be engineers. I can look at all these kids and say that they despise engineering. When we could benefit from statistics, which is another thing that you're saying. I'm just saying things we both agree upon. There's a lot of stuff that... You might not agree upon that I could bring up as well. It's just another example of how education tends to indoctrinate people. One of the things that I hate the most. And it's because of shit like this that I'm starting to get a little bit annoyed with the day-to-day -day politics. And not just politics, but the day-to-day -day things that people get made politics in general, just how people think society should be managed, and the individuals of society, how they should be managed. I mean, I'd rather trust the guy who's being an ethical douchebag, who's saying, yeah, based upon my system of ethics or morality, this is right, this is wrong, this is right, this is wrong. I'd rather just trust that guy, because at least you can tell he's a dumbass, and he's not trying to get into complex or abstract terms to confuse people or convolute people. He's just an out-of-context individual. In terms of a universe, he's out there. He's not completely rational. The dumbass who gets into the abstract literary terminology, scientific mistakes, and pointless uses of education. These guys are the guys who are really giving a dent to society. Just saying this is wrong, well, that could be used for horrible things in this world. And it has been used for horrible things in this world. But it's fading out into the contemporary. It's no longer there. In this contemporary world, we're just dealing with these guys who can use politics for a very convoluted means. For a very disgruntled method <sighs> and it sucks I mean I could say more but I got 15 seconds on the clock I could go to history but history is the worst all the mistakes and accidents that they say in these history books that's horrifying so I'm just gonna end it here deuces